Hello everyone, welcome to session eight of LTech 623. Congratulations. We're now in week three of our four week cycle. We've gone from pre-production to production and this week we'll be focusing on post-production, which refers to the tasks that must be completed after filming and includes, of course, editing our raw footage into scenes, inserting transitions, and adding titles so that we have a final polished video production. I wanna talk a little bit about the overall editing process. So let me show you from sort of a bird's eye view what the editing process looks like. Obviously, the first step in the process should be to back up your footage and then import that footage into whatever editor you're going to use to edit your video. Through this course, you have access to WeVideo and you're more than welcome to use that, but you don't have to. If you are familiar with some other products such as Camtasia or iMovie or Final Cut, you are welcome to use any of those editors. It's up to you. Just keep in mind that my ability to support and help you may be limited based on my experience using those editors. Most of us have already imported our clips into WeVideo, which looks something like this. Now, depending on how long those clips are, it may take quite a while for them A, to upload, and then B, to process. Now, the next step in the process is to watch the footage. And the idea here is to simply look at what it is you've captured. And you want to just simply sit back and enjoy it and kind of keep an eye out for clips that you particularly like or that you don't particularly like. Because the next step in the process is to identify your favorite or best clips. Which ones do you feel really capture what it is you were trying to capture or communicate to your future audience? After you've identified your favorite clips, the next thing that you wanna do is build what they call an assembly edit. And you do this on the timeline. And basically, you're laying out the main scenes of your video. In short, you're putting the best clips in their proper order on your timeline. Now, here's an example of what an assembly edit might look like in Wii Video. And you can see I have a track named Main Clips. And there's multiple clips there, and they're kind of all spread out. But this is just to give me, as the video editor, kind of an idea of the sequence of this particular video. Many of you will want to reference your storyboards to help you lay out this assembly edit. Now, from here, you begin the process of fine-tuning those clips clip by clip. Now, this means trimming, cropping, animating, transitioning from clip to clip. Most of the time, you'll be zoomed way in on the timeline and trying to get every clip just right. And you can spend a lot of time here in this, in this particular step of the process. Now, eventually, when, when you feel like you fine-tune most of the clips, you need to step back and watch the whole video from beginning to end. Think of this kind of as a macro perspective. Does the sequence of the clips make sense? Do some sections drag on? Are you using any footage too frequently? Rewatching will help you identify these potential problems. And so you may need to go back in and revisit step five to fine tune clips even more. That's totally normal after rewatching your video. From there, it's time to begin adding polish. And this means adding in B-roll, your title cards, any text callouts that you need, and of course, adding in some closing credits. After you do that, the next step is to mix your sound. You may have your narrative voiceover or your narration track. You may have some background sound effects, and you may have a little bit of background music at different points. That's entirely up to you as the producers of this video. But ultimately, you want to make sure that all of those sounds are properly mixed. And I can tell you, most of the time, you want that background music, if you have any at all, to be extremely soft. And one trick here is just try listening to your video with your eyes closed. This will allow you to figure out how to adjust the elements such as voices and sound effects and music so that they're all nicely blended together. 
Now, another step, which may not apply so much to ours, is adding in some color correction if needed. And this is just making sure that the brightness and the overall tonal color of all of your clips match so it feels like a cohesive whole. If you want, you can adjust the color temperature to create a particular mood. And there may be times when you want to increase the saturation or contrast to make certain things really pop off the screen. And then from there, it's time to give your video one last watch, finalize it, and export your video. So that is a bird's eye view of the editing process. So now what I want to do is talk about some editing tips to help you get started with editing your footage. Now, one of the most important things is, regardless of what software you're using, is to learn how to use tracks and labels. It's really important to try to keep different kinds of content on different tracks. This will help you stay organized and avoid accidentally editing the wrong thing. And that is quite common when you have a relatively long video project that you're working on. It's also recommended that you give these tracks meaningful names and to collapse the tracks that you aren't actively editing. This helps you focus in on the tracks that you are actively working on. Now, another tip is to really master the timeline. It's important to understand what the timeline is showing you. And in particular, it's showing you time, of course, in minutes, seconds, and at its most granular, individual frames. Most video is shot at 24 frames per second. Of course, that's beginning to change a little bit, but let's just assume we're working with 24 frames per second. If you zoom all the way in on the timeline in Wii Video, that means you drag the slider all the way to the right, you will see that the time codes represent frames, and that one second is equal to 24 frames of video. And this becomes important when you're really fine-tuning your video clips. There may be times when you need to drop a frame from either the beginning or the end of a particular clip. And so understanding how to zoom in and zoom out on this timeline is going to be really critical. Another useful trick for framing your video is to use a rule of thirds overlay. This overlay is, is just an image file with three lines in a transparent background. How we can use it is we can simply add the still image onto a track in our timeline and stretch it out for the duration of our video. Now, of course, this is just a guide, but it can help us position things and make sure that the action that we want viewers paying attention to is happening at those sweet spots of the rule of thirds. When it comes to actually exporting your video, you'll want to remove this track completely because that's just for you as the editor. You don't actually want to export that as part of your final video project. Another important thing that I want to emphasize is understanding safe areas. Safe areas are areas on the screen where all the text and important action should be kept within. This is to ensure that the information is not cropped by the viewer's display. As you can see here, this is a 1280 by 720p aspect ratio or a 16 by 9 aspect ratio. The white dotted line represents the safe action area, which is 93% of the entire frame. The safe action area is if there's any action happening within a particular clip, you want to make sure that that action is safely within that white dotted line. Similarly, we have this red line represents the safe title area, which is 90% of the entire frame. As the name implies, the safe title area helps guide us as to where any type of textual information, such as titles, credits, or other textual information should be positioned so that it is viewable on pretty much any device. The reason we have to care about safe areas is because of all of the different dimensions of televisions, computer monitors, and smartphone screens. They're all different and they all scale video slightly different. 
So if you want to make sure that everyone can see all of the key elements of your video, it's important to keep the text in action inside of those designated safe areas. Just to show you, WeVideo by default doesn't respect these safe areas. So if you insert a lower third textual callout, you can see that it's all the way up to that left edge. And so the text name and description in this particular screenshot is actually violating the safe text area or safe title area. The good news is, is you could go in and reposition that text box. A major decision early in your editing process is whether or not you're going to edit your audio separately. And this will depend on the quality of your original video. Unfortunately, WeVideo isn't very good at audio editing, so you'll probably want to do that in Audacity or some other dedicated audio editing software. In order to edit your audio separately from your video, you're going to want to separate the audio from your video clips. There are many programs that allow you to do this quite easily. For example, in the QuickTime player on the Mac, you can go to File, Export As, and as you can see here, one of the options is Export Audio Only. And this will allow you to save an audio only file that you can import into Audacity. Another good application that's cross-platform is VLC. And this gives you very granular control of how to save your audio and in what formats using what audio codecs. And just like with QuickTime, using VLC, you can export a WAV file that can be brought into Audacity for editing. Another important tip is learning how to apply transitions. Of course, transitions are a major part of video editing. And as you probably know, this involves selecting two clips and clicking on Add Transition. Now, once you have a transition, you can edit it to change its duration. The default in Wii Video is a one second transition. You can also change the type of transition effect. And as you can see here, Wii Video provides lots of transition possibilities. You want to be fairly conservative in what kinds of transitions you use and how many different transition types you use. Sometimes more is less. And just because you have access to all of these transition types doesn't mean you should necessarily include them in your video. Another important aspect of editing is scaling and cropping. You may find times when you have some unwanted content near the frame edges of your clips. This can be solved by simply scaling the video and adjusting its position on the project canvas. For example, here's a clip of someone walking, and you can see the tips of that person's shoes in the bottom of the frame. Now, if for some reason you didn't want those shoes to appear, you could scale up the clip so that it's actually larger than the canvas, and then position it to make sure that the feet are no longer in the frame. So that's an example of using scaling to crop out some unwanted part of the video. There may be times when you want to animate stills, and we've seen animated stills in several of the examples that we've used. And WeVideo makes this particularly easy. Essentially, you have a starting point and an ending point. And as you can see here, there are two values that I'm adjusting, the scale value and the position. And so in the start of this animated still, its starting position is a scale of 1.4 or 140%. And its position has an X and Y value of 0 and 0. Now, importantly, that X, Y position is actually in the top left of the canvas. I want the end position of my still to actually maintain a scale of 1.4, but I want it to have an X and Y value when it finishes the animation. I want it to have an X and Y value of X negative 326, and Y negative 309. And so if we actually play this clip, this is the effect. And you can see this nice kind of animation, which is bringing some movement to what is just a still image.
And finally, the last thing that you will have to do is prepare to export. And this is relatively easy. Please name your export video production project one dash your name. Make sure you choose high definition and then click export. Don't worry too much about the thumbnail that you choose. WeVideo gives you a couple of options there. But go ahead and export your video and provide a link in Canvas according to the details of the assignment. Okay, everyone, we're out of time for today. Have a great week, and I'll see you in Canvas.